Hi there, my name's Vince from My Mate Vince, and in this episode today, we're going to try to fix the boot lock on this Rolls Royce Silver Spirit. So, this is a weird one because when I bought the car, the boot wasn't working, but then after it got driven to my dad's place, the boot started to work. Ever since then, it's been intermittent, but the other day, I couldn't get it to open for hours upon hours, and I had stuff in there. Then at the end of the day, it opens really really weird and it doesn't matter what combination i do to the locks either that one there or the door locks it's just really hit and miss whether it works so i didn't want to take the risk of it failing completely so what i've done is i've taken out the little latch the sort of striking plate latch that it closes onto and then i've just taped it up here and here so if i undo the gaffer tape from here and here we should find that it springs open there we go. So now we're going to be working up in this area here. So it's going to be very fiddly. Uh, I don't really understand what's going on at the moment, but let's try to get the camera on the tripod and let's see if we can work it out. I don't know whether the issue is with here or whether it's something in the car which is not supplying the voltage to here or only intermittently supplying the voltage. So right now, if I was to do this to the lock, you can see that it's not kind of, uh, if I lock it here, there you go, so that's locked. Can you see it's not releasing? So again, right now it's not working, unless of course it doesn't work when it's open like that. That is a possibility. I took off the striking plate thing from here and just left it over here. So let's get the camera on the tripod and see if we can work out what is going on. Well, I'm just emptying out the boot here to make a bit of room because I'm gonna have to be probably lying inside this to work on here. We've got the window wiper cover that's supposed to go in the engine and we've got a couple of other covers here I think one of them is supposed to be for the battery which is down here but it looks like these leads look a little bit long so maybe a bit of rerouting has to be done maybe that battery's kind of uh, got more height than the original battery very small battery though for such a big car isn't it anyway check out the check out the tyre it's a good spare nice good quality spare there look at that why was that even kept Anyway, is it Avon? And most of the tyres on this car are Avon. And I think they're the original Rolls-Royce tyres. They're pretty expensive. I think two of them were replaced in 2001, I think it was. And uh, back, even back then, it was over £500, so not cheap. Now, thanks to a viewer called Marcel, I've printed out the workshop manual. So this is the Rolls-Royce workshop manual. Unfortunately, I can't find a Haynes manual. Haynes was a thing, I presume maybe just UK, maybe not worldwide, but it was brilliant because they would dismantle all the cars so you knew pretty much how to do most of the uh, operations on a car. But this is a workshop manual. I presume the way it's written is gonna be more for mechanics, people who already know their way around the Rolls-Royce, but it's better than nothing. So uh, yeah, there's a little battery kill switch here. Can you see here? If you're storing it over winter, you can kill it by doing that there. There we go. Right, I'm in the boot of this car now. I'm sure I'm not the only one that's ever been in the boot of this car, given that it, I think it was probably had some previous owner as a gangster, given that it's got a burner phone and all the uh, drug paraphernalia on the inside. But here we have it's here so now I'm just gonna turn the key if I can reach it see what's happening ah, okay so that lifts up there you're not gonna be able to see any of this are you no I don't think you are I don't think this is gonna be the best video to film right so that does that then it closes and it does that so Those micro switches are working, so why then? Because it looks like we've got a micro switch here and here. Why then is it not releasing? Let me just make sure that that is definitely open. No, that's locked. to give now mm. 
Hmm. Uh, electrically, I think it's working. Right now, anyway. I mean, what are these for here? They had a number plate lights here. I wonder what they connect to. Yeah, I think it might be a more mechanical thing with the uh, with the springs and stuff not working properly. See, when I do that, that should be going down more than that. And it's not. But I'm wondering if it's more a fault to do with the actual... This thing here, because this is all loose. Look at that. This is all loose there. Those rivets, they're not riveted anymore. Maybe, uh, maybe that's the problem. That's a shame. Right, it still doesn't seem to be freeing up, but I suppose the boot is on springs, isn't it? So the springs will push it up and then that will allow the catch to work. So I think the catch is okay. I'm wondering whether we have to lengthen this one here. Because it's really not going down like it should do. Yeah, I think I know what the problem is. Right, because of the play in this, and there is a lot of play in that, you can see there, there's loads of play. It's only actually attached now, that right hand rivet one is still attached. These other two I don't think are doing anything. And because of that, when you push this like this, it moves two black plastic things on the inside along. So when you pull this, it moves the two things out. It's only moving one out on this side. This side's not moving. And because it's not moving, it's not allowing this thing here this white thing is the thing that actually does the unlocking. So you see this white thing here? This thing moves along and pushes. And when that pushes there, it pushes this down here. And when that pushes this down, it releases this here. So you can see it's locked now. You see, it doesn't go down. But when I push this down, it will release that lock there. When, not now, because I need two hands to do it. But when the, the force of the springs of the boot lifted up. So what's happening is, this white thing here is not being pushed out enough this way because there's a little black thing just here. That's not moving. The black thing on this side is moving, but this one is not. So uh, I think that's the problem. This is not being pushed far enough like this. So I think we have to look into those rivets. Right, so it's easier to see here in this little diagram. So this is the, the white thing that hinges up from here. You see this little thing here, just on the top of the glove there. That's black in real life, and there's another one on the other side. And when you do the handle on the outside, it pushes that inwards. And by pushing that inwards, that pushes this along, yeah? And when this pushes this along, this is hinged here, so it forces this down. And when that goes down, it goes to the actual latch and undoes that. So I think to start with, I'm gonna undo this screw here, this screw, this screw, and this screw. And I'm gonna see what happens to the inside here. Basically, I wanna get this mechanism out of the car if possible. So I've got a chance to see what's going on. Right, so those three came out lovely and easy. This was a nightmare to get out, but what I did is I sprayed WD-40 through the inside because I can actually see on the inside. I was close to taking this light out. This light's all smashed anyway, so it will have to come out eventually. But luckily, it started to give. What I did is I actually tightened it a tiny bit, and by tightening it a tiny bit, it must have kind of broke the seal. And then uh, it allowed me to tighten and loosen just a millimeter. And then after doing that for a while, it started to give. What I'll do is when I'm putting this screw back in, I can put it in a more accessible one. Maybe one of the middle ones. Because there's a little bit more chewed up now than the others. Okay, so this whole bit here is now loose, but it's still held in with this. So I'm gonna see if I can actually undo the mechanism on the inside to take it out. 
I think I'm going to have to drill it out. It mentioned something about drilling the rivets, so I, I think they're broken anyway. I think I am going to have to drill them. Right, annoyingly, I think that's a waste of time because if you look here, it does say to the lock me mechanism to remove and dismantle. And it definitely says here, using a countersunk drill, carefully remove the pop rivet heads item three, securing the luggage compartment lid release handle. Take care not to drill through the handle or irreparable damage to the release trigger will result. And it says number three, and if I go back to here, you will see here number three is this handle underneath here. It's very hard to see. So yeah, that's annoying. Anyway, let's drill them out. It's a shame having to do this. It's not very repairable, is it? Not in the... Well, I suppose a lot of people do have rivets. Maybe maybe when it's off, I think it's okay, but then I'm a little bit daunted by this at the moment. I'm gonna start with one that's already broken. That's that one out. There we go. That one came off nice. Right, let's see now what it dropped down. Hmm. No. Maybe I have to drill a bit. Let me get a smaller drill bit and I'm actually going to drill the uh, kind of middle of the rivet. There we go. How is it going to release? Yes, it is. Excellent. Right, okay. So now... Oh, that's not good. So what, have those little rivets there just pulled right the way through? Don't know. Ah, it's broken here. Look. There you go, all smashed up and broken. Well, that's the reason it wasn't working, you see. Now, what I'm gonna have to do here, make up some metal plate or something to cover that? I really don't know. Ah, let me get my thinking cap on. We've gotta come up with some sort of uh, bodgy fix to get this working again. So I think what's happened is, this car has obviously had some kind of impact damage here on this lens. And look, it probably hits against this here. And when it hits against this, it would have put a lot of force onto this bit here. I think that's when it broke. But I'm just gonna get my dad to move these bits because you can see that these are moving very nice. So normally when you pull the handle, can you see that move in there? Let me just get the torch to uh, shine in it. And look, there's plenty of movement here, but it wasn't moving this one here and that's why the lock wasn't working all the time. It must have been just borderline. Right, okay, so if you see the black thing in there, now if you move the small one, Dad, so you can see there's plenty of movement there, yeah? And that wasn't doing that before. And the other side, okay, you can see plenty of movement there as well. So we've got to get our thinking caps on and see what we can do to fix this. Right, what I'm doing is I want to take this bit out so I can actually see what's going on. So I'm just undoing the little number plate light lenses. They're just held in with four screws there, 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 and there, and then they pop down. The lights there really remind me of the old Mini that I had. Yeah, okay, they all need to be cleaned up. They all look very tarnished. I'm not even sure if they work. So let's take this one out here. Also, what I need is, you know the little gaskets that you get to make things kind of, you know the little foam gaskets like this? Can you buy a sheet of them that you can then cut to fit different things? Because these gaskets are gonna be gone everywhere on the car. So if you know the answer to that, if you know what they're called, are they called ceiling gaskets, foam gaskets? Then hopefully I'll be able to get some off eBay because I'm definitely gonna need them. Not immediately now, but for example, when I put this back up here, if then I can put a gasket on, it will stop all the uh, uh, crud from flying up and getting into that lens and making it dirty very quick. There we go. Wow, even that, there's a serious bit of weight to that. Whoa, that's unbelievably heavy. 
lovely. Right now, that gives me much more access to here now. Really does. Right, so I've passed the wires back through for the number plate lights and I've just taped them up with some electrical tape just to stop them shorting together because I don't want to blow a fuse or anything like that. Right, I'm against the weather here, but I've got a plan of attack. So, what I'm going to do is, to begin with, I'm going to use super glue and I'm going to glue in the original part between here and here, which I've cleaned up nicely. I still need to clean up this here, make sure it's nice and clean. So I've got the original part here. So that part is going to be getting uh, glued back into here with some super glue. And then I am going to get araldite, so two part epoxy, and this was originally on the outside here. I'm then going to put this on top of here. I'm going to araldite this onto here to give it strength, making sure that all the holes line up, the rivet holes. That will ho hopefully give it some kind of bit of strength to the plastic. Yeah. Then I'm going to, obviously this is the original seal, I need to put the seal back on. Then I'm going to put this back on and I'm going to make one of these out of this old tobacco tin. Yeah. Clean it up and then I'm going to put that onto here and then my dad didn't have a rivet gun because apparently it broke years ago, but thank God for high street shops. I got myself, I know you have to pay much more than uh, something like Amazon, but check this out. 9 99 for a rivet gun with an assortment of rivets. So hopefully I'll get some that fit perfectly. I've got my super glue here and I've got my arrow dight. So uh, I'm well happy. I think that this is actually going to work and I think it's going to be a last in repair because we're reinforcing it with metal and then we're putting metal this side. And once we rivet through, we're riveting through from this one through to the metal and the metal is then going to be attached to the plastic to hopefully give it all strength. Fingers crossed, that's the plan. Right, annoyingly the rain's really coming down now, but I've uh, managed to glue that little bit there and I've got a clamp on it there just while the super glue goes off. So now, beforehand I was saying that I was going to put this metal bit on here, but I can't. This metal bit's going to stay on here originally like it was originally. What I'm going to do is, out of this tobacco tin, I hope this is not a rare one, that's probably been in my dad's shed for the past 40 years or something. I need to cut it down so it fits in this inner square. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to have the holes the same as this, but I'm going to cut the overall thing smaller because this inner bit here, this inner rectangle, will be exactly the same size as that there and we need it to be the same size as that because otherwise, you see this here is going to kind of foul the hole in here. Okay, so I'm just in the shed and the tobacco tin has been cut up and also sanded back as well. I also sanded back the original Rolls-Royce piece as well. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be spraying them up, not the side that I'm araldighting to the epoxy and to the actual plastic, the snap plastic, I'm not going to spray that. So that's just going to be araldighted and stuck on. But I am going to spray the other side. I'm going to spray both sides of this one here because it's only going on the outside of the plastic here. I'm going to use this stuff here, Hammerite Smooth Metal Paint. So that should be good. And you can see now that that's going to fit really nicely in here. The holes have been drilled. So it's going to be like that. That's going to go onto the plastic like so. This is going to go onto this bit here. That goes onto there and then the whole thing gets riveted through. Oh, so they've just had one coat there. You know, thinking about it, it's such a shame because your hands on this bit here, why didn't they make this out of nice aluminium or something like that? Because your hands are going to be on it. And what you're touching is just horrible plastic, which really has gone a bit misshapen over the years. You know, they put lovely chrome strips on it, but then the thing that you actually handle is uh, a lump of plastic. A bit odd. Annoyingly, it's still peeing down with rain. But I've just noticed, look at that front valance. Can you see on the right-hand side there, it looks nice, nice and straight. Look at that on the left-hand side. It's been pushed right up, hasn't it? Never noticed that before. That definitely isn't right. That looks to be up a few inches. It was awful. Oh well. Right, time to mix up my araldite. So uh, apparently this will stay working, I think, for 90 minutes. So it won't be set, but then when I rivet it all together, hopefully, if it does rivet together, then it will set overnight. So now I'm going to apply this to the other side of this, the side that hasn't been painted, and then I'm going to apply this onto the plastic on the car. 
Right, so you can see it on there now. And you know what? I've just had a bit of a Vinci brainwave. How about if I now cut a tiny one of these? Well, not tiny, just a bit smaller than this, to actually put underneath, underneath the plastic. Obviously, the aerodite hasn't set yet, because the the plastic is just like a kind of U shape like this, yeah. So what about if I get another bit of tin to put on top of that? Then when the rivets go in, it's going to hopefully be forced against the top bit of tin. So the tin's kind of sandwiching the uh, plastic on the top and bottom. I think that will be a good idea. Okay, I've cut this to size now and I need to spray it. And then when it's sprayed, it's gonna fit underneath this one here and it's gonna be fitted just on the other side of this up here, yeah? And I'm gonna aerodite it into place, but you can already see that even that alone now will probably be okay. But by the time the aerodite goes off with this on top, it's really gonna sandwich it up and hopefully then the holes will all line up. You can see there and uh, the rivets will go right the way through this one, the plastic, and this one and hopefully then it will be all good right check this out it has now been sandwiched top and bottom and the holes line up watch this we're through we are through and we are through and uh, i think i might know what these are for i can't see any light in this boot here so i reckon that here there's a something that's supposed to clip into place over this and there must be a light on that and that's what that connection's for so yeah i don't think the bits i had earlier were for that but i don't really know yet i'll worry about that another time right so this little set here comes with different sizes it's got 15 of each size of the rivets 2.4 3.24 4, and 4.8 i think these ones are going to be a four mil so the 4.8 are too big but these ones look perfect so you can see it fills up the hole here looks to be the same kind of hole that was originally there because you can see the kind of where the old rivet used to be so it looks perfect there and also fits through these holes here on the uh the bit of metal Okay, it's in bits again. I'm having an absolute nightmare and let me tell you why. So, the rivets are not long enough. Do you see these bits here? They're only going through, basically, from there to there. You can see that the rivet now is full. It needs to then go through the next bit of plastic on the car and obviously that little bit of metal that I did as well. So unless I can get much longer rivets, I'm going to have to look to see if I can. Uh, this option is not going to work. So, also, it's just sort of very weak and seems to be breaking everywhere. So what I'm doing now is, can you see I've formed this here? This is just out of Fortnum & Mason biscuits. So at least I've used nice ones for the Rolls Royce. <laughs> but what I'm going to be doing is, this is covered in Araldite in here. And the problem I've got is, where it's broken here, this side, it wants to keep coming apart over here you need an amazing amount of strength to actually get this to get this to operate so what i'm hoping now is if i sort of get a hammer and form that around here squeeze it all into place then wedge it and leave it maybe overnight maybe that will give the plastic the sideways strength that it needs that's what i'm hoping because as soon as i'm going to put something in here that plastic's just going to break out to the side and then we're going to be in the same boat as we were to begin with. So if this doesn't work, I'm going to have to see if I can just get a brand new, a brand new mechanism. It just seems a shame to have to replace everything just for this bit of plastic that's gone. If I'm honest with you, it's not the best design. Plastic on plastic. Why wasn't this made out of metal? Why wasn't the handle made out of metal? You know, when you're paying this much for, not, not what I've paid, but originally when they're paying this much for the car, I don't think that's a very good design. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna bash that into place now with a hammer, kind of form it round, leave it, walk away from it. And then hopefully tomorrow, if that's gone off nice and hard, I can then drill the holes and then consider then putting the, uh, the handle back on, maybe even with self tappers. I might use self tappers going right the way through here into the the metal and the plastic and if you're wondering why i've missed out the bit here is because there really is no spare room that plastic has to go all the way to the end of the metal there in order to do this one here if you have 
this tin going up around it to do a complete box, which would be better, it doesn't operate the lock because there's not enough movement here. It doesn't move enough because the tin gets in the way. I mean, maybe there's adjustment on the inside, but it was working. It's just that the rivets were broken. It's much harder than I thought to fix this one. Right, it's time to call it a day for today because it's been a bit uh, a bit trying to say the least. But I've put loads of Araldite in there now. Annoyingly, this Araldite takes like 14 hours or something to cure. Not like the epoxy I've got at home, which only takes about 10 or 15 minutes. So I've put the little seal back on. The Fortnum and Mason's thing is pushed up there with a load of Araldite. And then I've used these two screwdrivers to wedge it in. I hope when I come back tomorrow now, that will have gone off and then we can start worrying about whether to use rivets, see if I can buy longer rivets, or whether we're going to use like self-tappers or something. I'm not even sure. Maybe I'm wondering if there's a way I could get bolts and nuts through if I can get to the other side of it. I don't know, but anyway, I'm going to worry about that tomorrow. Right, it's the next day now, and I managed to get some longer rivets from B&Q, of all places, which is like a high street DIY shop, and price-wise, quite reasonable. I think that was £6 or £7, but if you have a look, I want the 4mm ones, and they've got 4mm at 16mm, so I'm hoping that's going to be okay, because the other ones were only 8mm. Now, if that's not long enough, I bought some super long ones here, these are about £2.50 I think they were and if you have a look these are 22 mil long but they are 4.8 so they're thicker so I will have to re-drill the holes but you can see they should be plenty long enough to get through everything. Now has this stuck? I don't know. Let's take the tape off and see if it has. Right tape's taken off. Please 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 have stuck. I think we might be okay. Right, so what I have to do now is drill these holes here, then put the handle on, and then try and rivet it. No sooner have I started, but guess what? It's raining again. Oh, I really need a garage. Right, here goes. I still don't know if these rivets are gonna be long enough, because I, I wish they were 20 mil, but these are 16. But I'm gonna give it a go. So in case you don't know, what a rivet does is, this thing here basically it goes onto here and when you pull it it pulls this pin right the way through and the pin's got like a head at the end and as it's pulling through it widens up this collar and the idea is it's supposed to be wider on the other side so it doesn't uh, it doesn't come out in theory let's give it a go i'm going to do the good one first right so that's all the way in there And I'm going to put quite a bit of pressure up because I want it to, uh, you know, go in as much as it will. And now you can see, it's pulled that all the way through. Well, it's on. It's definitely on. Might be okay. Right, I'm gonna do the same with the other two. Guess what? I've riveted that one and that one. I'll show you in a second, but watch this, you see? At the moment, we're locked. Do it this way. Yeah, so that's locked now, watch. It opens. Lock it again. Doesn't open. Do that. It opens. Fantastic. And if you have a look here, it doesn't look bad, does it? I think it's going to be okay. I mean, they were riveted to begin with. So, uh, yeah, I'm actually happy with that because this time last night I just thought, oh, this is a nightmare. I'm going to have to replace the whole thing. But you know what? I think we may have got away with that. Right, I'm going to get the lights back in clean it all up, finish up, and then uh, we can do a proper test with the boot actually closed to make sure when the latch is down here that it is locking properly on that. Okay, wish me luck. What I've done is I've taken the tools out of the boot because I'm not 
confident with my uh, <laughs> my repair and also I don't really know where to put this latch on so what I've done is I've tried to follow the same dirt marks that were around the washers before but I don't really know if that's going to be correct or not but you can adjust it up and down and also uh, at an angle like this right here goes so that is in the open position at the moment there's nothing in here of any importance actually there is one second my patreon marker pens let me take those out here goes now is it gonna work come on close this nice shut lines seem okay so I don't think it's like pulled it down too far it's a little bit further down on this side but that's probably to do with the hinges or something All right now come on oh yes so it doesn't lift up without pressing the catch, but the handle, oh, that's so nice. That has never worked that nice. In fact, that feels lovely. You're not gonna be able to hear the click. Let me see if I can get the click. Oh, do you know what? That feels really good. It opens really, really easy. I don't have to make any more adjustments. Fantastic. Well happy with that. Well, that enjoyment was very short-lived because once I started opening and locking the boot, the problem came back again. Yes, that's right, the problem came back. So I'm gonna show you the solution in a few minutes, but I'm just gonna show you some old footage from a previous video when the lock wasn't working and then started to work again. And I just want you to have a close look at the lock from the inside while I'm shouting out the My Mate Vince Massive in a few seconds and see if you can maybe work out what the problem could be. Maybe some of you have already worked it out earlier in the video. I was sure it was the rivets on the handle, but no, there's actually another problem. So anyway, let's give a shout out to The Massive while you guys are looking at that. The Massive this month consists of kitdigital.com, Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky, Having Fun Repairs, Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service, Will Michaelis, Chris Seal, Felipe at mrkeebs.com, King Kurd from Lobo Auto Sales, DJVG, Stuart Park, Ellis Garbutt, Pigsy, the My Mate Vince fan club over on Facebook, Braden Butts from Connecticut, Kenneth Blenstrop Sorensen, Simba Tinabu, and Gabe McCandless. Have you guys worked it out yet? Don't worry, I'll put you out of your misery in a few seconds now. Right, there's been further developments on this boot. I did finish up the video all happy, but I've been working on it for another couple of hours since then. Now watch, it is working. Well, it's working properly, properly now, but I, uh, I know now what was the original problem, and it wasn't the handle, although the handle did need fixing. So watch this, if I lock this, hold on, is it that way? Yeah, so you can see now it's locked, it's not opening, and then unlock, and it opens, yeah. So, the actual problem was... Well, the, the, the problem was partly to do with the rivets because you've seen that they were broken. But the actual problem was to do with this thing here. Now, can you see? I've got a nice spring on it now. Earlier on, I didn't have that. That was just flapping around in the wind. And basically, it's really obvious how it works. When you lock the car, all it's doing is lifting this up. So then when you push the handle in and out, the little black pushers can no longer push this because this is a thing which unlocks it. But when it's up in the air, it can't push the pushers. So if I lock it now, it's been forced up in the air by this thing here. Yeah, you can see here that it's been forced up. Yeah, now look, it's under spring tension. So when I unlock it, like that, the spring tension will force this back into place so the pushers on the handle can now push it. So when this is up, the pushers on the handle do nothing. That's all it does is to lock and open it. It's just like that. Now, because this spring here, this is called taking care not to overstress the interrupter return spring. Unfortunately, this spring had been overstressed and it was no longer pushing down. So what was happening was, you can see now, it's pushing down nicely. So what was happening was, when this was kept up in the air, the boot handle was no longer doing anything. 
just the same as when it's locked. So that's the reason why after the drive home, it started to work because with a bit of gravity, boom, 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 it knocks into place. But then it's just as easy when you unlock it for it to go up and then not fall back into place again. You have to whack the boot quite a few times to get it to work. So right now it is working perfectly because I've managed to stretch the spring, re-wrap it round so it's now got tension again. And now every single time it works and every time I lock it, it locks and every time I open it, it works. So it just shows you that the actual problem wasn't to do with this, even though this was definitely incorrect and not helping the problem. The problem was all to do with that little spring just here. So that is it, but I am happy now. Apologies for the awkward filming. Really, this is a, uh, you need numerous cameras set up around the place, but I'm happy now because the boot is working 100% every single time, which is really great. So that's it, I'm gonna take shelter now because the thunder, rain, lightning, and everything else <laughs> is against me today. Until the next time, see you then. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and hopefully there will be plenty more videos on this beast of a car. Take care everyone.